I'm Erin, and today we're going to be taking a look at how to make soap. We're going to be exploring saponification, where you have a fatty acid and a base, and you combine the two together to make a salt, which is in this case, soap. So our base today is going to be some sodium hydroxide, and fatty acids will be all kinds of different oils and Crisco and a whole mess of things. And the awesome part about that is that we're making soap at home and saving money, and hopefully, you know, learning some awesome chemistry. So let's take a look at what we're going to be working with today. What we have here is some grapeseed oil, some canola oil, coconut oil, Crisco, and our sodium hydroxide, along with some vinegar. Now these act as the fatty acids. This is obviously our base, and this is an acid. Now, the vinegar we have here, in case any of the base or lime, which is the sodium hydroxide, spills because we want to neutralize it. The fatty acids here are what are going to combine with this to make soap and as a byproduct are going to give us glycerin, which is awesome because that feels great on your skin. So let's go get our safety gear on and get started. So now that we got our gear on, or most of our gear on, let's go through some ground rules. Whenever you're handling lye, rubber gloves. You do not want to get this on your skin, and if you do, remember that you've got the vinegar, which is going to neutralize it and, you know, stop you from getting hurt. Uh, anytime that you're going to be pouring the lye, you're going to want to wear a mask, and you're also going to want to open at least two windows, and if you can, the patio door. Try and get some ventilation going in here. Let's see, I've got some clothes on, which is good, but mostly protective clothing. I don't want to ruin any of my nice stuff. I've got my hair tied back because, you know, you don't want to touch your face, you don't want to touch your hair, anything. You're handling some pretty nasty stuff. Try not to use anything, actually be sure not to use anything involving aluminum in this experiment, unless it's the aluminum that you're going to line the bottom of the oven with in case you have any spills. So let's start making some soap. We now have to measure um, 17 ounces of water, including a tablespoon of sugar that was already uh, mixed into some hot water. So let's go ahead and do that. Please note that I'm always zeroing the bowls before I add anything to make sure that I'm not messing up. All right, so now that we've got the 42 ounces of Crisco, 17 ounces of water with a tablespoon of sugar, I'm going to get my mask on, I'm going to open some windows, open the patio door, get my gloves on, and get started. Because I don't want to wait a month for this to cure, I am going to speed up the process by roasting it. And then instead of taking a month, it'll take three days to a week. Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes and we're supposed to take it out and mix it, lifting the lid away from us. And we're supposed to stir it around a bit. And then we're gonna put it back in. Ooh. It's interesting. And as it cooks, it's supposed to start looking like applesauce, which is kind of crazy. 
You can see that it's kind of mashed potato-like. It is now time to put it in the mold. Right, so the soap is in the Pyrex dish or mold. It's on top of a nice little rack to let the air pass through and let it harden faster. And tomorrow, we're going to cut the soap into little bars, wait three days, and we'll be done. So it might have taken a little while, but because of wonderful editing, you don't know that. It's worth it. And it smells really great. And it bubbled. I already saw it bubble, so I'm really excited. Okay, so it's a day later and it's time to cut the soap, so let's go ahead and get ready to do it. So you'll notice that I have an extremely sharp knife here and some hot water. The hot water is going to heat the blade to make it easier to cut the soap. Um, so here we go. Okay, so now that we've cut our soap into some nice little squares here, and we've taken the edges and cut them aside too so that we can use them as smaller soaps so or just make balls out of them, we're going to let it cure for three to four days, and then we're going to take a look and see the final finished product. See you in a bit. Welcome back. It's been exactly one week, and it is now time to test the pH of our soap. The pH is going to tell us whether or not the saponification process is complete, and it should range between an 8 and a 10. You can test it using chem strips, but if you are at home and don't have chem strips, you can technically go old school and just taste it. Kind of like when you put your tongue on a battery, if it has a sting, then it's not quite ready yet. But please don't try this unless you've waited the appropriate amount of time to let it cure and finish the saponification process. If it's not done, wait a couple days. You don't want this on your skin when it's not ready. It won't feel good and it's not good for your skin. But if you wait the appropriate amount of time, it's just going to be soap. It's going to be awesome and it's going to be all yours for free. So let's take a look at what's going on with our soap. So that's it. That was our final finished product. Saponification is complete and the soap is ready to use. We've even got some pretty cool little shapes here. We've got some big squares and little ones. We've got some square yet still cylindrical looking shaped soaps. And we've even got some little soap balls. And the reason that we can reshape it is because different oils have different properties. So before you make soap, check to see the properties of the oils that you're going to be working with so that you have an expected final results. I had a lot of fun doing this. I hope you had a lot of fun watching it. And I hope I've inspired you in some way. If not to make your own soap, then to keep learning some awesome chemistry.